Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? We're live here on uh, on the Twitch channel at Amplitude Studios and the YouTube channel at, at uh, Humankind Game. How's everybody doing? Chat, what's up? Uh, we've got, uh, okay, I'm going to practice your name in French. Laurie Stephanie. Hey, hey everyone. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Yeah, Laurie Stephanie. Did I do okay with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, Lois is a senior concept artist over here at Amplitude Studios, uh, and we're going to be talking to him a little bit about the art in Humankind, which is going to be uh, pretty awesome. I know how much uh, a lot of you guys love it, and I love it a lot as well, so I'm really pumped about this. Um, but just to start off, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, we're live on both Twitch and YouTube, uh, and we're monitoring the chat uh, for both. We got Stephanie on the ones and twos, uh, kind of watching what you guys are saying. Um, and at the end of this stream, we're going to have a bit of a Q&A session. Um, so if you do have any questions about any of the art in the game, just toss them in the chat. We'll gather some and then kind of near the end of the stream, I think we'll go for like uh, 45 minutes to an hour, something like that. We'll just play it by ear. If we're having a lot of fun, maybe we'll go for like five hours. Who knows? <laughs> no, we won't. But um, uh, also, okay. yeah, damn. Oh, damn. We should. <laughs> um, so uh, another thing, you still have time to play the open dev uh, beta on Stadia. Um, I think you've got just about a day left to play it. So... Uh, get in there, try it out if you haven't already. It's really cool. You get to play the first two cultures of human, uh, first two eras of humankind, uh, which is the ancient era and the classical era. So if you haven't already, check it out. Let us know in the chat if you've already checked it out. Uh, that would be awesome. And uh, let us know who you chose to play in the classical era. I'm, uh, I'm really interested to know. Um, and then the final thing, we're, uh, we're in the pre-purchase period of Humankind. We announced that um, we're coming out in April of next year. So uh, if you do want to pre-purchase the Digital Deluxe Edition, you can do that on Steam. You can do that on the Epic Games Store. And uh, you can do it on Stadia. Whichever you'd like, you can go to humankind.game uh, to go check out all of your options. But, all right, let's get into the nitty-gritty. Um, Loris, how are you? I am doing well. Doing well? Um, if you don't count the lockdown and uh, the pandemics, of course. Yes, um, of course. So, we hope uh, uh, we hope everybody uh, back home is, is staying safe out there, doing okay, uh, doing your part to, you know, do this whole social distancing thing. That's actually why Larissa and I are, uh, are doing this from home. So, yeah. yeah. So um, lately we've been uh, working from home. Uh, most people at Amplitude are working from home. Um, it has been easy for me, uh, kind of, because uh, my girlfriend is uh, working from ho home as well. Nice. Um, so uh, we've been working uh, alongside, and um, we have a cat. Uh, so Perfect. You're in good was, company. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it, it's been easier than for some of the people at Amplitude uh, yeah. who are alone at home, and some of them... Uh, came back to the studio uh, when things uh, went better. Yeah. Uh, like a month or two months ago, maybe three months ago. Okay. Yeah. Totally. It's uh yeah it's been it's been a learning experience definitely but I think uh, are things feeling a little bit okay for you now kind of getting back into the groove of working from home. Mm, working from home is like it's different. Yeah. Um, it has. Um, good good uh, points and uh, bad things about it yeah um i mean um it's uh, more difficult to like uh, emulate and brainstorm and uh, yeah, having totally. chats with co-workers and um especially for artistic things and creative stuff yeah so but yeah. actually doing like illustrations and concept art and uh, 3d modeling and painting it's like um, as always because uh most artists that are working uh, at amplitude uh i've been doing free uh, we're a freelancer before so right okay used to it. nice 
All right. Well, um, awesome. So l- let's get right into it. So what we're doing today, um, maybe, uh, Larissa, I'll let you uh, kind of walk us through what we're what we're looking at today. We got some. I just want to get this out of the way. We we've got some pre-recorded footage over here of Larissa working on uh on stuff just kind of working his magic sometimes it's a little zoomed out like what you're seeing here but you know he zooms in and you know he does his thing it's all it's all the process um yeah actually it's zoomed out on purpose because yeah. um when you uh, are beginning a piece you want to have a uh, general look at it and uh work uh on it from uh far away so um yeah, because um, and usually the stuff we are illustrating are gonna uh, be in the game as a really small size, uh, right? So yeah, it has to work even if it's really small. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely have to take Com- like all the sizes. Wise. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, can you talk a little bit about what we're what we're seeing here right now um, on the video? Yeah, so it's a uh, an early sketch because um, oh, usually. Uh, what we do uh, first, the usual stuff we do is uh, having brainstorms about the um, topics we're going to uh, treat or the piece we're going to have to work on. Yeah. And um, usually we uh, brainstorm with his- historians first, art directors, creative directors, and uh, some of the artists. Yeah. Uh, even producers. Um, so just throwing stuff, uh, ideas. Uh, trying to find references. Um, as it's an historical game, uh, we try to uh, look for real ev- events that happened. Yeah, um, definitely. And uh, then when we find a, uh, the, a good topic that uh, fits what we want to uh, talk about or express with the piece, uh, we, ju- we just do uh, one, two, or even sometimes three, four the sketches okay that we, uh, that we validate later on um, during production we were more comfortable with what we had to do and uh, sometimes we only did one sketch and it was uh, sufficient right yeah definitely so this one is the Franks here though we're kind of reworking the Franks a little bit art yes so yeah since last week uh, I, I've been working on uh, this rework of the Franks um, some of uh, some people uh, talked on the forums uh, about the um, the fact that we should maybe redo some of uh, of the uh, civilization screens we uh, had for the game, and we thought that it was a good idea. So we um, we reworked some of them, uh, including the francs. Um, yeah. Uh, since there uh, there are expansionists in the game. Uh, we wanted to have a Frankish king, so we choose Charlemagne, which is uh, supposed to be uh, uh, the most famous French- Frankish king there yeah. is. And um, we choose to uh, represent his coronation in Rome, uh, so with the Pope. Yeah, right. Uh, can you guys in chat, are, are you guys, Is are the levels okay? Let us know if the... Uh... The sound is all right, and I can I can edit that. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna boost you up a little bit there, uh, Larice. Um, uh, so yeah, I wanted to talk maybe um, about uh, what we do usually day to day stuff. So every yeah. morning, um, all the artists uh, are gonna have a, a chat. Uh, usually uh-huh. half an hour, maybe a little more where we just uh, talk about um, day-to-day stuff, uh, pandemics, and uh, games that are going at, um, going out, um, games we play, or any kind of stuff, because um, we are uh, working from home, so it's important to uh, keep a, a team spirit, kind of. Right. Um, it's It looks like we are doing quite well, despite the lockdown, um, in terms of um, production of the game. So that's good. Nice. Um, as I said earlier, Tim Walker has, uh, has suffered a little bit, but we, we do okay. Yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, can can you talk a little bit about uh, sort of what you do at at Amplitude specifically, and and specifically for Humankind, and kind of you know how the how the team works. 
Yeah, so um, I uh, joined Amplitude two and a half years ago uh, for the production of Humankind. It's my first video game, actually, uh, in nice. a studio. So that, that, that was a, a huge step for, step for me. Um, um, what, uh, where I'm coming from is I, um, I am a self-taught artist. And um, I had kind of two careers uh, as a programmer, uh, software engineer, and an artist. But I started both at the same time when I was really young, like early teen, teens. Yeah. And um, I had a career in IT, actually. Uh, I spent like seven, eight years uh, doing uh, softwares. And um, I decided to change that and uh, do art. I was still doing art all along. Yeah. So I uh, tried freelancing and um, and then um, I wanted to uh, come to Amplitude and it worked, which was great. Very uh, nice. Especially for, because uh, I love history. So um, it was a, a surprise for me because when I um, wanted to uh, come uh, working at Amplitude, Humankind wasn't announced, so I thought that I would be working on a, an endless game, probably. Okay. So it a, yeah, it was a, a big surprise. Nice. A, a good one. Does your does your interest in in history um, play into kind of uh, the work that you do here? Like, do you, do you kind of take inspiration uh, from history you're in, interested in and put it into your work in any way? Mm, I wasn't really interested in a specific part of history, of right. human history, but um, I'm really interested in this kind of stuff. So I'm learning a lot uh, yeah. working on humankind, which is great. I'm really curious and interested in a lot of things. So, yeah, it plays uh, great for that. Yeah, totally. Um, so can, can you talk a little bit about the art team here at, uh, at Amplitude? Um, I mean, like how, how many artists do we have actually working on these things because it's not it's not just you working on all 60 cultures right no yeah. uh, so we are not that much actually that many I mean um, at the start we had a pre-projection for humankind and uh, there was three artists uh, César Espero Femme uh, and Oriente which is uh, who is the art director right and we had a uh, fixed and contract uh, artist Luca Léger yeah, old French names. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. And um, when I arrived, uh, it was just the beginning of production. Um, and then Quentin de Warren came in and uh, Thibaut Girard. So um, if you count everyone, we must be, we, we, we've been six, like Luca left uh, two years ago. Okay. Um, so yeah, we've been six, six artists uh, working on Humankind at Amplitude. And we um, at we art directed uh, some external studios as well for a um, couple of illustrations. Cool. So you guys are working on all kind of like the the uh, civilization art uh, that we're seeing here, uh, but then also like the you know emblematic units and the quarters and and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So um, artists that did some of the civilization screens are Aurélien. Uh, Rante, um, César, Quentin, Thibault, and myself. Perfect. And uh, we are doing, um, yeah, um, I add a list of all the things we do uh, for the game. We need, a, need a long so, list. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we do civilization screens um, and we do units, uh, illustrations, tech tree, of course, there are a lot of it, uh, illustrations in tech tree. Right. Infrastructures, the um, buildings you can uh, build in your city to uh, make it better. Events, of course, there are a lot of events in humankind or usually in Amplitude's games. We have civics as well, uh, notifications and uh, even wonders uh, to illustrate. So a lot of stuff to illustrate in uh, Amplitude's games. Nice. I know that uh, like a lot of artists uh, have their own style, their own way of doing things. Everybody kind of approaches stuff differently. Are you kind of free to explore those uh, those different styles, um, or are there like specific guidelines that you have to follow for for some of the stuff that you do for for the game? Yeah. Um, actually, when I came in, there 
was um, a, a certain kind of style uh, for the game. The pre-production pieces that were uh, done by César and Aurélien, and it kind of uh, evolved uh, along the way. Uh, I try, um, I tend to do uh, illustrations that are way more colorful, so it took a colorful uh, turn at, uh, when I arrived, and then Quentin arrived and he does a lot of colorful stuff as well. So. Um, I, I remember that um, our head uh, producer uh, was surprised, kind of, when I, I showed uh, the first unit uh, tooltips I did, which were really colorful um, compared to the prior stuff. Uh, so yeah, the the style is evolving. We nice. still have our own style as artists, of course, but we try to uh, have a um, make um, it cohesive. Yeah, made, yeah cohesive. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we we try to balance to balance between unified visual identity and our own style. Yeah, definitely. I I can I can definitely feel that in a lot of the art. I I can I can feel that you know somebody different did one versus another, but it definitely has that same sort of energy uh, that a, a lot of the other ones do, do. It's really cool. Yeah, some of the people that are working at uh, Amplitude try to guess who did what. And yeah. sometimes they have a hard time doing that. Yeah. Uh, but it can actually become a game uh, if people want to guess, try to guess right. who did what. That would be interesting. We'll put a face to to every single one, and then we'll just we'll just let the people try and guess. Mm. Um, so, for you in particular, what's your what's your process in coming up for the inspiration uh, for? A lot of these uh, these culture arts. I mean, for for this one in particular, maybe uh, for the Franks, how did you decide to to come up with this, and what was that process like? Um, so, as as I told earlier, um, the process uh, starts with a brainstorm uh, between. Uh, I'm gonna name them because they are important for the game. Uh, cool. Historians Benoit Humbert and Etienne Rida. Uh, and usually we are talking with the creative director and art director, uh, Jean-Max Maurice and Aurélien Hante and uh, Cohen Billon. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to name names. Um, Amazing. Uh, so um, when we have a, um, an, a, an idea of what we are going to do, um, historians are going to gather a lot of reference, historical reference for settings, uh, costumes, uh, objects, uh, and it's the same for percent art, where they are gonna try to gather architecture uh, examples, and sometimes it can be really difficult because uh, historians don't have uh, stuff for some of the civilization, or it's uh, more difficult to find uh, references and uh, archaeological stuff. So we uh, sometimes have to uh, create stuff from zero mm. or okay. uh, be inspired by stuff, but uh, still improvise. Yeah, definitely. Um, for everybody in chat, uh, just a reminder, we will be taking your questions just kind of like more near the end of the stream. Uh, we do have Stephanie kind of watching uh, both chats. So uh, we'll kind of be picking and choosing and then we'll get to them at the end. So we're not ignoring you. We love you all for sticking around. You're the best. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll get to those questions, definitely. Yeah, um, so for the process, if I um, uh, continue, uh, then yeah. they usually put the stuff in a, a pure ref, which is a software that can uh, share pictures and you can navigate uh, like in a huge board of uh, pictures. And um, we, as artists, uh, will add extra stuff to the references, usually master paintings, uh, because uh, lighting and uh, colors for paintings is really important. So uh, we try to get inspiration. And uh, when we draw uh, arch architecture and uh, people, uh, we try to find references for uh, characters, gestures, uh, objects. Uh, and even materials uh, sometimes, because uh, we have to uh, depict like a uh, leather stuff or metal or clothes. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, and then we are uh, going to do a, a quick line drawing 
um, as I told earlier, or even just one if we have a uh, um, a good idea of what we want to do. For yeah. the francs, I, I just uh, did two, and uh, we decided to go with the second one, which uh, had a uh, more interesting perspective and uh, field of view, camera point of view. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then uh, sometimes we are going to do a value sketch, which is a uh, grayscale sketch with only maybe three or four uh, grays to try to have a, a, a strong uh, composition, okay. uh, which is really important uh, for an illustration to uh, make it easy to understand what's happening, even in a small scale. Uh, sometimes later we do a, a color sketch to uh, get a better sense of what we're gonna have for the colors or even several uh, of them to uh, get to pick one or uh, discuss between artists which which one would be better right do we want to uh, do we want to look at those from uh the pure ref is, oh, the, is yeah. that what you're talking sure. about yeah all uh, right I'm, I'm talking about those but uh, um, yeah we can uh, take a look at them or yeah. later i don't know so yeah i'm gonna uh, keep uh um, talking about the process yeah definitely um, but we'll take a look at those after after you're okay. done with sure so there we have a difference of uh, pipeline between artists. Like uh, Quentin is the more traditional pa uh, painter uh, between us. He uh, does everything by hand, which means uh, he will draw perspective uh, in Photoshop, uh, in the painting software, uh, and no 3D at all. Ooh, uh, nice. And he will do light and everything by hand. Um, all the other artists do 3D, do 3D. We model the scenes, uh, and uh, usually we use um, uh, characters that we can pose, uh, and um, we place a camera and we take screenshots. So, uh, we do renderings and take screenshots. Uh, like Aurélien and César will only do a gray boxing, which is which means only modeling uh, uh, simple meshes and. Uh, pose characters, right. and then uh, don't do materials or or, or uh, this kind of stuff or uh, complex rendering. Thibaut and I will really push on the scene, and uh, that's something you can uh, you will probably see later uh, in the video we are watching now. Uh, I go really far in the uh, modeling process. I do yeah. a kind of a whole scene with lighting. Uh, I love it. Videos. It looks so cool. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, we end up with kind of the same step, which is uh, constant. We have a really, really strong, strong base with lighting colors uh, and composition uh, by hand. Aurélien and César will have the same, but uh, coming from a gray box state. And uh, Thibaut and I will have a, a rendering, kind of uh, really complex rendering. Very and then cool. we overpaint. Uh, nice. which means we try to have a uh, cohesive style of kind of comic-y graphic novel. I don't know the style we we had we have for humankind now. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I'm just watching this here and like seeing you, uh, you know, work with the structures that are so far out of the field of view. Uh, is that mostly for a lot of like the lighting and stuff that you're trying to do? I don't, uh, actually, what I did was um, I tried to uh, get uh, the the setting here in the Frank in the Frank's uh, civilization screen is the old Saint Peter's Basilica in Rome, which was the one that was there before the current Saint Peter's. Uh, it was uh, built in 350 um, um, CE, Common Era. Um, so I wanted to have um, a um, scale that was um, coherent with the real thing. So I downloaded a model of um, the Basilica and I tried to uh, set it at the right scale so that uh, my my scene was uh, co co coherent with the real event, which was uh, the coronation of Charlemagne. That's so cool. Yeah, I love it. it. It's awesome. So we have the real setting and the real columns. Yeah. I tried, I tried to at least. Right. Um, 
can you tell like which which programs are you using for uh for this right now i saw you hop into photoshop and you're using some sort of 3d software here as well yeah we use blender okay uh, which is a, a great software to do 3d modeling and sculpting and uh, is uh, free and is open source so uh everyone should try it it's really powerful and uh it can do everything um yeah and for painting and drawing we use photoshop nice uh, so yeah we are going going um back and uh um using both of the softwares yeah okay um so uh a little bit later on we will uh we will go into kind of like the the awesome lighting that ends up coming in here but kind of can you talk a little bit about how you get that accurate lighting i might actually move ahead in the video just so that we can we can look at that because it, it just like it ends up being super cool i'll go back don't worry everybody uh, so yeah uh, when you use blender or any any kind of 3d software actually um you can set lights um and um usually they have a, re a uh, renderer uh, which is ray tracing light right so you have all kind of uh bouncing light and uh, reflections and refraction everything is taken into account yes so it's it's uh, really powerful and uh, realistic yeah it looks it just it looks really really cool the way it's coming in and i think you did kind of a, this a similar thing with the moogle art right yeah yeah, yeah I, I did i did the same thing yeah um here it's uh, it's not uh cycles which is the renderer in blender the ray tracing renderer it's uh it was ev which is a real-time renderer okay. like video games actually so we can move a lot easier in the scene because yeah. uh, now it's ray tracing and it's, it takes longer to render yeah um so so how come you do uh, rely this heavily on on placing the 3D models uh, kind of where they are? Is is it just to get like the perspective right, or uh, is there anything else at play? I'm no artist, so that might be a super dumb question. But no, 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 it's not. <laughs> not no, no, it's interesting to uh, to talk about that. Uh, usually, we have to uh, balance between trying to be accurate. At least I try to be uh, the most accurate accurate possible. And uh, you have to um, move objects sometimes to uh, have a better composition in your uh, illustration yeah. or a, be a better a light or sometimes a mesh or uh, like bouncing the light in a certain way and you want to move them uh, to get a better result. Uh, for example, it's a matter of preference. Like, uh, as I told earlier, Quentin will uh, not do 3D all to, uh, whatsoever. So he's uh, doing all this like on a flat surface and uh, just taking references and uh, yeah. trying to get the better light possible. Right, definitely. Um, so and is there using? I mean, uh, just I just wanted to add something. Yeah. Us using uh, 3D software, uh, it's um, like you can uh, model things, but you can reuse things from uh, one illustration to the other, materials, for example, or sometimes we even use uh, the assets that were produced for the game, human kind of 3D environment artist yeah. uh, at amplitude. Uh, so it, it's, uh, you, you, uh, you don't have to uh, spend that much time, so much time doing those things because they're already done. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as somebody who uh, like I'm a I'm a terrible artist. You never want to see me draw anything. Uh, but it's cool to see this entire process because it's more than just you know uh, putting a pen to a piece of paper or something like that. You know, it's like it's a lot more goes into it, and especially for these culture arts. Like even just watching this here, you're doing work on the entire cathedral that they're in. Um, yeah, I wanted cool. to add uh, interesting stuff in the background because um, else a uh, huge church is like really empty. So yeah, uh, those things are actually exist and uh, we're there in the ancient basilica. So yeah, uh, and they appear in the composition uh, at the end. So that, that's a, that's good. Um, what, what did I wanted to say? Um, I wanted to say that um, I don't remember. That's okay. That's all good. Um, did you did you kind of do this with uh, some of the other pieces that that you did as well? That kind of 
this go when this I, much in detail? I uh, I use another software before uh, joining Amplitude, and I um, I started to use Blender uh, two and a half years ago when I uh, came into Amplitude. Yeah, and um, I'm getting better and better each time I'm I'm using it. So yeah, I used um, more and more uh, for the illustrations we we did for humankind. Yeah, for other shift screens, but uh, even other illustrations. Very cool. I mean, I was in the Discord right before this this uh, this stream started, and that's it, we kind of we had just announced that this stream was going to happen, and people were like, "This stream has to be like." more than an hour right like <laughs> you know uh yeah, just I'm, I'm, yeah i'm yeah I'm, uh, I'm speaking a lot of uh, really technical stuff i hope it's not boring no it's super so. cool i th i think it's it's super interesting and i what i what i was getting at was that these things take a lot more than you know a couple hours even like how how long does the typical um culture art take you to finish? um usually we spend like from three days for the simplest ones to five days, usually. Yeah. To do yeah to do civilization screens because they appear really in a uh, large scale in the game. Other illustrations are uh, take a shorter to do. Yeah. To make. Do you uh, do you have a favorite part of this whole process? What do you like doing the most? So. Actually, um, modeling in this 3D software is really fun, and it uh, renders a uh, step that is usually not fun, which is tracing perspective by hand, which uh, Canton does. Yeah, uh, it's really not really fun, and uh, <laughs> um, modeling in a 3D software makes it really fun. Like you play Lego. Lego, I don't know. Yeah, it is kind of like that. It does look yeah. pretty fun. It it's. Yeah, very cool. So your least favorite, that was my next question. What's your least favorite? That would be kind of doing it by hand. Um, yeah, uh, doing perspective by hand is really uh, hurtful. Uh, <laughs> uh, especially when you have a really complex scene and uh, a, um, a point of view that is uh, pointing towards the ground or towards the sky. Because right. you have three points perspective, which is really difficult to do. Um, yeah, definitely. And... Um, uh, what did I want to say? I don't remember. Um, um, your uh, do you have a favorite piece that you've done? We we do also have like a bunch of the uh, different culture arts uh, to kind of go through, but I kind of I kind of want to see what your favorite is. So my favorite one is the one that is going out tonight and is not revealed yet. Uh, so you can check the Twitter account. Uh, it's 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 real, and I, it's not marketing. I really like <laughs> the, the one I really like best is the one that uh, was supposed to go out today. Yeah, um, we are we are putting that one out. By the way, chat. It's uh, it will be uh, right after this stream. So head over to our Twitter account uh, at Humankind Game, and uh, you'll see the new culture card. But in the ones that are out here uh, already. Probably Italy that uh, um, was revealed uh, lately, um, nice. and uh, earlier eras, Aztecs and Mughals. Uh, yeah, Mughals is it, th they're my favorite. That that one is just so cool, and I love the way the light comes in onto the structure there. It's super cool. Thank you. Um, let's uh, let's take a look. We'll come back to this video uh, when we're taking questions, but I wanted to take a look at. Uh, let's do this at some of these. So uh, Loris graciously um, put this together for us, and it's kind of the initial sketch of the art compared to the uh, the I guess the final culture art, or at least the where it's at right now. Um, so yeah. did you do most of these? Is that um, sometimes the, uh, the artist doing the sketch isn't the one doing the final piece, uh, which is right. the case here. Uh, the sketch was done before I arrived at Amplitude by Aurelien, and I did the final piece here. So you get you, you would get something like this over the, on the left side, and then you kind of put yeah. together, you put the polish on and pull, put that that beautiful frickin' lighting on there, and, and then yeah. you call it a day. Then it's on to the next one. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, 
Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just I was just gonna say, should we just like go through them? I I, I just want to take a look at them because I haven't seen all of them yet. I, I just kind of threw it up here, but I wanted to be surprised. Yeah, along I thought with... that uh, those were interesting and uh, people yeah. would be interested in uh, looking at them. Yeah, um, definitely. So yeah, this one is the Assyrians, if I remember well, and um, uh, both the sketch and the final piece are done uh, by myself. Nice, very and cool. Uh, then uh, the Phoenicians, Aurelian did the sketch, and I did the final piece. Nice. Uh, I think it's Exum cool. next. Yep. Exumites. Uh, Exumites. Exumites. Right. And then uh, the Aztecs over yeah, here. Yeah, the Aztecs. Uh, so here, um, actually, we have a uh, sketch on the very left that uh, was done by Aurelian, but uh, we weren't uh, uh, happy with it. Yeah. Uh, not the sketch, but the um, orientation of the sieve. Okay. Uh, we wanted to, you wanted, we wanted to represent the game of the Aztecs and uh, all the Mesoamericans. So we changed the topic. And uh, actually, I didn't even do a sketch here. I, I used asset of the game, uh, or maybe it's concepts I did for the game, and just uh, threw, threw a, a scene uh, together and placed people and then just overpainted that's that's awesome i love the ball game it's super cool and that's so it kind of took that perspective with uh parts of the culture card as well um and then so, these are the hittites i believe hittites yeah yeah nice uh all this column is done by me i think and then we okay. have a, and two other columns done by Aurelien and Constant. uh cesar and uh thibault did some uh, as well but i couldn't i couldn't find the sketches so right uh, all right, and, and then this is, uh, Holy Roman Empire. The Teutons now, right? Oh, Teutons, right? Yep. Um, um, and then the Norsemen, which is very yeah. cool. This one's black and white. So yeah, the, the sketch on the left was or done by Orient, and I modified it a little bit. Uh, this is a, a value sketch, so you only have grayscale, but you can. Uh, see the light already and yeah. see the composition and it's really important to know sometimes. Super cool. Yeah. And then my my personal favorite, the Mughals right here. I just love, yeah, the way the sun is coming over here. Like, oh, it's so cool. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it was uh, just a quick sketch uh, done by hand. And uh, then I uh, modeled the stuff to fit the sketch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, super cool. Um uh, then maybe we'll we'll go through the other ones as well, because yeah. it's just awesome. Chat, what do you th what are you thinking of this? <laughs> Those are Love done it. by Aurélie Hunter, uh, cool. who is the art director at Amplitude. Okay. So those are the cells, right? Yep. Um, and then the and Almex. Then the Al Almex, right? Very cool. So yeah, uh, he pushes uh, his sketches a lot more than myself. Yeah. So. Well, even this one, yeah, it's so so detailed. The so, yeah, the you... Almec one looks very similar. I mean, the, yeah. there's still uh, there's still you know the the lines and stuff, but it looks super cool. And then um, who are go. they? I don't remember. These ones are the Steph. If you're in chat, cat. You help us out with this one. There's uh, so many to keep track of. I know most of them. Yeah. This one we did the culture card so long ago. <laughs> yeah, those were done like two years ago. Ah, Mycenaean. Ah, oh, Mycenaeans. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks, chat. <laughs> Coming in clutch. Um, and then oh, this one's so cool. The Huns, right? Yeah. Yeah. The opposite way, but still so good. Oh um, yeah. Opposite. And, the, and these are the um, the Persians. No, not the Persians. Uh, Morians. The Morians. Yes, yes. Uh, and then. And the then last... we have Quentin, uh, Quentin de Warren. Uh, oh, this so is so cool. The, the the sketches are very interesting with these ones. Uh, the, I did the sketch for this one. Very cool. And he had to adapt. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, we have a kind of different style, but it's okay. Yeah. Um, it's fine it's great uh he's uh really talented yeah just yeah, so Four colors good. and light yeah yeah um and then the dutch here yeah he did the sketch then i think he did all the sketches 
The rest of them? The rest of them, yeah. Nice. And then Maya? Maya, yeah. Cool. And yeah, if you, if you want to take a look at the top uh, right corner of the Mayan sketch, you can see uh, oh, right. small pictures. Yeah, and it says uh, composition, value sketch on the right, and okay. color sketch on the left. Very cool. Re sometimes really small. Yeah. Oh, awesome. The Khmer, um, the Hoseon, and then... Oh, I couldn't find the sketch, but the, the ELO is so good. That, yes. Um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, and it's Cartage, I think. Suomi, thank you for the nice Hoseon artwork. Hey, you're getting some compliments over it. Th this one wasn't you, was it? Was the sketch you? No, no, no. no. All the sketch and uh, the illustrations are done by Quentin next. Right. We'll, we'll let them know. Venice. <laughs> yeah, Venice. Very cool. Um, and the Hal de Nossonne. Awesome. Super cool. Yeah, really, really cool. Yeah. So these are, yeah, these are super sweet. It's super cool to, to see kind of like where they came from. Um, some of them are more similar than, than others, like the, uh, this one right here. It's fairly similar. I mean, I guess you got the, the tarp over top, but... Um, yeah. yeah, sometimes we have to uh, modify stuff. And, yeah, for uh, sure. Adapt. Yeah. But it, yeah. Anyway, we'll go back to, uh, we'll get the video going up again. I think it's still running. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think uh, maybe we'll take some questions from chat. Um, Kat, if you, got, if you got any for us, we'll, uh, we'll take them over here. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Luris, th those are those are super cool. So I guess we got a couple more a uh, couple more reveals to make before we get to the end of the contemporary era. Um, just to remind everybody, we do have the culture card coming out uh, at the end of the stream. Should be in about eighteen minutes or something like that. But there, it will be there. Um, and, and and it's the one I like most. Yeah, it's the one you like most. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, awesome. So one sec here. Just bringing some stuff up. Sorry, everybody. Um, so uh, which which were some of the which were some of the ones that you liked working on the most? Um, I know I know that you like the one that's coming out next the most. Yeah. But um, are there any that like you really? you really loved to work on? Well, most of them. Most really. of them, yes. Yeah, because they're always interesting to uh, look uh, for stuff um, to populate your uh, illustration, your scene, right. and uh, learn historical facts and, uh, and interesting uh, things you yeah. know, about history. Definitely. That's very cool. Um, so we do have some uh, some questions over here. So we'll go through them and uh, we'll see how it goes. Duncan, uh, Yonek, Jonek, uh, can't be at the stream, but really appreciate such things. More streams like this. Good luck. Thanks, man. Yeah, actually, um, some of the other artists that are working on Amplitudes are really pumped about uh, doing streams to explain what they do and how they work. Oh, so yeah. We totally should do some more. Absolutely. Yeah, this is this is really awesome. If you guys love it, just just let us know. It's uh, it's really fun to kind of see this side of, of things. Um, all right. Uh, sorry, just grabbing a question here. Um, Luca uh, says uh, you're all working from home. Uh, well, a lot of the team at Amplitude we. Uh, we were working from home when we were in complete lockdown and now it's kind of you know we have a couple people going to the office but uh we're still mostly working from home right loris is is that kind of the case for you yeah that's right yeah uh, the, yeah the whole app team uh i mean for illustration and concept art are working from home uh, uh some of the 3d artists are working from the studio okay though. Yeah. Do they have like all the equipment, oh, um, most of the equipment over there, or do you guys um, do you guys yeah. have a setup at home for the yeah. most part? Yeah, um, you have to have a um, a uh, powerful uh, computer to do that. Uh, I even have a uh, Cintiq, 
uh, which is a huge uh, uh, screen tablet that you can work on. But uh, it's because we are used to work at, from home as freelancers, as I, I said earlier. Yeah. Uh, usually artists work as freelancers uh, as well. Nice. So, yeah, we have stuff to work. Um, so do you only do artwork or do you also do modeling? And uh, how is that shared between the artists on the team? So, no, we, are, we don't do any of the assets that um, get into the game, uh, actually get into the game. Uh, but we do concept art, and usually uh, when we do uh, buildings, for example, or units, uh, vehicles for the game, or uh, sometimes, no, yeah, that's all, um, yeah. we are going to send them to the 3D environment artists, uh, and they will use them to have the right scales and uh, to do the iPolys versions that they are going to use to produce low poly assets that go into the game. Right. Nice. Um, sorry, that question was a uh, real master paw. Sorry, I'll, I'll try and read your names, uh, everybody. Uh, Nine Nines uh, asks, uh, or not really asks, but just a bit of praise. As somebody of Cambodian descent, uh, Cambodian descent, uh, very happy you included the Khmer. Yeah, so our historians do a lot of work on on uh, choosing some of the cultures that, that make their way into the game, and I think so far they've done a very good job. Um, me too. Uh, Imperator asks, um, what is the general process behind replacing a culture card artwork work, such as the Zhao one? Uh, the Zhao one? Which one is it? So uh, I think initially, like a little while ago, the, Z the zoo in the ancient era? Oh, the Zhao. The okay, Zhao. Right. Did I say it wrong? I'm sorry. No, no, no. You, um, you said it right, but in <laughs> French, we don't pronounce it like that. Oh, That's how do you right. pronounce it in French? Les zoo. Les, les zoo. Okay. Yeah, but we have to. Yeah, we should uh, totally pronounce it. it yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, um, yeah. So what's what's the process behind replacing art like that? Um, I think that um, usually um, we are uh, not happy with the uh, earlier version, and we just want to uh, have the best game possible. So. We are going to uh, redo some of them if we have the time for for it. Yeah, definitely. Like I know some sometimes we just gotta like uh, get the work out, maybe have a placeholder or something like that. We know it's gonna change uh, later, yeah, but sometimes. Yeah, and so, sometimes like for the case of this one, I mean, we we put it out through the culture cards, and we heard a lot of people, um, you know tell us about the Franks in the, in the, uh, forums. And we kind of took that feedback and then it, we applied it directly to the game. That's kind of a lot of the amplitude philosophy, especially with the stuff going on with open dev, uh, and what we're doing on games together. It's all about kind of community feedback and kind of taking what you guys say and trying to make the best game possible for, for all of you. Um, and, um, there are some pieces that we want ourselves to uh, come back to later, and we have a, uh, a big backlog of stuff we want to publish later if we have time. So even yeah. ourselves, yeah, uh, sometimes we want to polish things, or yeah. redo some of the things. Definitely. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so this one's a long one. Uh, Jack Miller, the French countryside is very cult uh, colorful and diverse. Was it hard picking a unique quarter? Mm -hmm. Or did you uh, have a say in it? Um, where did you draw from for your inspiration, and what uh, has been the most fun? Uh, are we talking about the emblematic district of the French? Yes. Because I, I don't remember which one is it. Uh, I can't which remember either. Uh, I'm gonna take a look. It's in so, the one of the more recent uh, culture cards. Are you talking the? Oh, I, I thought he was talking about a uh, building. I mean. In the game, yeah, the uh, the quarter, right, Jack Miller, the, quarter, the scriptorium. Yeah. Oh, the scriptorium. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I didn't produce these the, ones. The thing uh, uh, about the the emblematic quarters—that's a lot of like our historians, yeah, try uh, coming up with uh, the units and the quarters. Um, we did have Benoit on a stream earlier. Uh, a couple yeah. months back now, I, I think. Um, so maybe we'll have to have them have on again so we can kind of answer that question a little more. 
uh, accurately. Uh, but the second part of the question, which I think you can can apply a little more generally, was uh, where do you draw your inspiration from uh, for some of the emblematics, and which one has been the most fun that you've worked on? I guess you didn't work on the scriptorium. No, I didn't. Yeah. And um, um, C Cesar and Orion did most of the um, um, city center and emblematic districts okay. in the early production. So I did only a uh, couple or three sets, I think. I did the Mesoamerican one. And um, I, the, the one I worked on, which was really interesting, was the um, Polish Kingdom uh, emblematic district, which right. is a... a um, Small fort. I don't remember the name. Right. Uh, and, but the, the shape is really interesting. Okay. And you worked on that one? Yeah, I worked on that one. Nice. Uh, um, all the sets for the Mesoamericans were really interesting as well. Uh, all the pyramids. Okay. Yeah. Um, Shadow of Gaia asks, uh, I have a question, but I don't know how to word it. LOL. <laughs> uh, why has Amplitude always had very good aesthetics that's a big question <laughs> uh, yeah that's a big question i think that uh, the founder of amplitude uh roman de vaubert uh, really likes to have uh lots of illustrations uh in the, the games that's why there are a lot of illustrations in all the endless games uh before humankind um i think it's uh, easier for the player to immerse himself in the story the, heave, the events of the game, but um, yeah, I, I'm I'm quite happy with that because uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy working on humankind. Well, definitely, especially with a 4x game or any strategy game, uh, I think there's a, like having a heavy reliance on some of that artwork and and some of those illustrations. It just makes sense, just because there's a lot of UI in the games, and you're going to be looking at it a lot. So it's it's very cool to kind of look at something that's as pleasing as as the artwork in in humankind for sure. Um, uh, all in all in Ra asks, uh, I use three D models uh, for refs, but seeing someone build the whole set piece as a reference is on a completely other level. It's fascinating to watch. Not really a question, but there you go. Yeah, well, actually, it's it's kind of quick to do yeah when you used to model stuff yeah, like do a lot of stuff and then you're going to become really fast at it and uh and it's it's um more fun than doing it by hand from the perspective i, I mean did, did it take you a while to get to the point that you're at right now not really when i started using blender i was used to use some other 3d software but not that used right um and when i started using blender uh doing stuff every day it took me like two months to okay. be comfortable yeah yeah so nice. it's quite kind of fast um white spirit asks uh i truly love the endless tech tree but you made the humankind tech tree so lively and beautiful how did you achieve that um what do you mean by li by uh, lively <laughs> i mean um it's colorful because um, there are a lot of illustrations in, in it, but I wouldn't really know how the tech tree was in the previous games. Yeah. Um, did, did you um, uh, d you did you work on some of the art that's uh, associated with some of the narrative events and the t uh, the tech uh, elements as well? Yes, yeah. I did some of them. Okay. Uh, I think the tech tree was mostly done by Quentin. Okay. Uh, nice. Mainly done by Quentin, but we, we did some of the pieces in it. So chat, we're I I think we're just we're gonna have to have the entire art team on stream. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Gia Kersey, uh, at just a couple more questions here. Gio Kersey asks, um, do you save and reuse these Blender scenes either as references for other 2D art or to actually further detail um, into a used 3D model? Um, it, yeah and no. Okay. Um, yes, sometimes we uh, reuse some of the uh, small objects we do. 
uh, actually I, I do, I don't know for other artists, but uh, I, I reuse um, materials I've uh, done because I create procedural materials for uh, the stuff I do. Okay. Um, and reusing the whole scene, it happens sometimes, but it's uh, not usual, no. Right. All right. Uh, another question from Gio. Um, do you find that using Blender scenes as a reference helps keep the art style similar uh, between the artists? Do you find that uh, stifling... Or, okay, sorry. Do you find that stifling RE more interesting art styles? Uh, I don't think I understood the question. Um, I'll read it again. Do you find that using Blender scenes as a reference helps keeps the art style between uh, the artists uh, coherent? Mm, n not really, because um, each artist does his own modeling and lighting in the, the 3D scene. So we are used to different stuff. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't think it, that it has an impact on the cohesive style of the game. It's more a when we overpaint and we try to have peop, um, have the characters have the same proportions, kind of the same style, uh, line art, because uh, what we did with the humankind was uh, having in line, uh, an outline for the, the stuff we draw. Yeah. And colorful uh, colors. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a name for this one. I'm sorry. Um how uh how do you make the patterns kind of like the one on the babylonian floor uh i think uh Quentin did it in photoshop uh flat and okay. then uh yeah we can uh, modify it uh, in photoshop like distort the picture and put it in perspective but usually when we have to uh, create patterns we uh we get reference from the historians or from ourselves uh looking for uh, on online for patterns and uh, sometimes validating with the historians if it's okay to use the, those yeah. and creating some stuff that looks like but isn't really a pattern, existing pattern. So the references are super important to what, to what you're doing. Uh, yeah, we yeah. have to use a lot, lots of references yeah. for light, for face of people, morphology, costumes, gestures, materials everything yeah really important um and then the last question um kevin williams uh or willems sorry um i wonder what the different artists do to have a somewhat uniform art style in the game how is that coordinated between the pieces uh we do or between all the pieces of the game um i mean i i think all the pieces artist does yeah, all the pieces, kind of, how, how do you guys maintain um, kind of a uniform style throughout? Like, I know you guys have uh, different approaches to the way that you do things, but mm -hmm. is there are there any guidelines to the way that um, you say, oh, yeah, this looks like something that belongs in the game, and no, this doesn't really cut it? Yeah, actually, it's uh, usually empirical like this, yeah. Yeah. Like now we are kind of comfortable with style, so uh, we will just do our stuff. And um, Aurélien, uh, who is the art director, Aurélien Rante, will uh, always take a look and um, ask to modify stuff it, if it doesn't fit the style. Right. But it's now it's uh, it doesn't happen that often. Yeah. We used to. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine kind of starting off. Uh, you know, you're still kind of trying to learn about. Uh, what the style is uh, yeah, and early and, uh, on. As I said earlier, the style evolved throughout the production of the game. Yeah. Because, yeah, sometimes we are, we are uh, going a little bit in a direction for a piece and it's going to set, it sets a, a new reference, re referential. Yeah. Yeah. Say that. Yeah. For the, for all the, the other pieces. Cool. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. It evolves organically, I mean. Yeah. Um, we have just a bit of praise here. All so colorful with emotions, uh, says uh, Tanta Mimi um, and Kevin Willems. They're all studying. It's hard to choose a favorite. Um, 
thanks a lot for uh, for joining us, Loris. This was really awesome, and it's super interesting to see the way that you and the team kind of put some of this stuff together. This video was uh, very interesting for me, especially editing it. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. It yeah. was really fun to talk about uh, the stuff we do. Definitely. Um, maybe we'll have some, some more people from the team. That would be yeah. really awesome. Because, uh, yeah, it sounds like you guys uh, you kind of have uh, different approaches to the way that you do stuff. So it's super interesting to kind of pick your brain and, and see how you get some of this stuff done. Because I know the art is just like super cool in this game. So keep it up, man. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, everyone who came today to uh, uh, listen to me talking about uh, really technical stuff. <laughs> it's good. It's super interesting to me. I man, I man, I wish I had your skills. Well, may, I maybe maybe one day you'll be able to to teach me your ways. I mean, if you start training, you you're going to make it. Yeah. yeah. You're going to yeah, you're going to become better. You're giving improve. me the confidence. <laughs> Awesome. Everybody, um, the new culture card should be up on our Twitter account uh, right now. Let me see. Let me look at the old phone. Um, very soon, at least, if it's not up already. Um, you can check that out over at uh, Humankind, uh, at Humankind Game on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, and uh, you can also pre-purchase Humankind uh, right now. It comes out April of next year. So uh, look out for that as well. Um, as for the art that Loris uh, is doing in, uh, in this video here, later on in the week, once it's all done, uh, it's all beautified. It already looks super beautified. But um, once it's all finished, we will post it on our social media. So if you're not already following us there, we'll post the final version of uh, what uh, Luris is doing uh, over here. So look out for that. That'll be really cool. Um, other than that, I think that's it. Anything you want to plug, Luris? And anything you want to... You, you want some more followers on your, I don't know, Twitch account or something? <laughs> no, I don't have a Twitch account. No, I'm okay. Uh, Sounds it, good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, I hope you all have a super good rest of the day and uh, we'll catch you later. We'll be going live uh, on Thursday on this channel at the same time just to play some of the endless games. So if you're into that, join us there. See you guys later. Bye. Thank you. See you guys.